Working with the Bach Virtuosi Festival over the past years has been a great pleasure and source of joy. Bach's solo sonata in A minor is dramatic. Um, the first movement is both declamatory and also searching. The fugue is playful. Actually, it contains the widest, the widest possible range of emotions, expression, um, ranging from playfulness to passion. As in all of Bach's works, the voicing is very important. The bass carries the music and it is divine um, what he has given us. We are lucky to have um, copies of his handwriting, the autograph manuscript for this piece, for his violin solo pieces. And this in itself is a work of art which helps us in the quest to bring his music to life. We look forward to coming back to Portland. We look forward to continuing our live concerts. And in the meantime, we wish you enjoyment of this wonderful, magnificent music of Johann Sebastian Bach.
Hello everybody and welcome to our living room. My name is Arthur Haas and this is now the fifth year that I've been performing in the Bach Virtuosi Festival. It doesn't quite look like uh, Portland, Maine. In fact, you are now in our living room in Manhattan. But we're very, very happy to be presenting this program. Uh, and we're going to be playing two arias uh, that is going to be, we're going to be joined by the fantastic soprano Shahrazad Pantaki. Uh, and she will talk about the pieces, and uh, we will talk about what our role is in these pieces. I'm Martha McGoy, and this is actually my first appearance with this festival, not in Maine. It's a great pleasure to be playing this wonderful music. It would be even better if Sherry were here with us. We're playing two Bach arias. One is from Cantata 61 and one is from Cantata 80. And I'm sure that Sherry will tell you more about the text and what the pieces mean. Our role really is uh, interesting. It's, it's accompaniment, but it's also an integral part of the, those arias. They were always meant to have a, a melody line, this case with text, of course. Uh, religious text, and then a bass line, which was just as important as the as the actual text itself. And then what I'm and then Martha plays the bass line, and what I'll be doing with my left hand is playing that same bass line, but also inventing a what they call a realization or a right hand chordal accompaniment that works with the mood of the piece and also works with the right harmonies. Hello, everyone. I'm soprano Sherazad Pantaki coming to you from my home in New Haven, Connecticut. This is my fourth year with the Bach Virtuosi Festival, and I know all of us wish we could be with our audiences in beautiful Portland, Maine. It's an honor to put together a couple of arias from Bach cantatas with the wonderful Arthur Haas and Martha McGoy through the marvels of virtual technology. We've chosen two of my favorite Bach arias for soprano and continuo, that's the bass line, which is often played by a melodic instrument such as the cello, or in our case, the viola da gamba, and a keyboard instrument such as the harpsichord. Bach often uses the soprano voice in cantatas and passions to represent that of the believer, the true believer. Add to that this pared down orchestration of both these arias, just soprano and a bass line without full strings or an obligato instrument or melodic instrument. And we get an intimate, gentler sonority within Bach's vocal writing. The aria Öffne dich from Cantata 61, Nun komm der Heiden Heiland, is just such a piece. The cantata was written for the first Sunday of Advent in 1714 when Bach was at the court in Weimar. Advent is the start of the church year, and Advent texts generally reference anticipation, longing, waiting. This soprano aria is immediately preceded in the cantata by a recitative where Christ, sung by the bass soloist, knocks at the door and asks his waiting believer to come join him in the feast. So the soprano aria responds with this text of joy and hope. Cantata 80, Ein Feste Burg, is one of Bach's most beloved cantatas. The first version of it comes early on from 1715, but Bach adapted it and expanded it some years later to its present form. This is a truly dramatic Reformation festival text depicting a powerful battle between the forces of good and evil, Christ's army in a war against the forces of Satan. Against the background of this triumphant battle imagery and resplendent orchestral and choral forces emerges this lone soprano voice of the believer, framing the context of this text in a more personal light.
Hi, my name is Paul Dwyer, and I'm a cellist with the Bach Virtuosi Festival in Portland. My wife Adrian and I live in Chicago, um, but we've managed to escape to Vermont for a few weeks. And as beautiful as it is here, there's really nothing we'd love more than to be just a little further east right now in Portland, sharing the beautiful music of Bach with you live. So much has been said and written about the music of J.S. Bach. It's hard to even know where to start. For me personally, the cello suites, of course, stick out, and they've been a really important part of my life ever since I was a child. They're some of the first pieces I remember playing, and of course there's so much in them that you never stop learning from them, and it's really a lifelong quest for any cellist to keep digging deeper, keep finding more meaning and intricacy in these beautiful pieces and really just try to live up to this music and enjoy it throughout your whole life. Thanks again for joining us in this unique virtual performance and experience. I know I speak for myself and all of my colleagues when I say we can't wait to be back in Portland in person next summer sharing Bach's music with you the way it needs to be celebrated. Thanks, and see you soon.